still alive, I see. And since you're here, that means you weren't captured and hauled off to a Redoran dungeon. Good for you. Were you able to acquire the registry? Does it contain any information about Bea's brother, Ulron? Ulron was exiled? That can't be right. He's an exemplary officer and a good man. Plus, he's the son of a counselor. Why in oblivion would House Redoran banish one of their brightest stars? I can see that. There has to be more to the story, but I'm not sure how we get it. Still, you proved you could be trusted, and you admirably performed this task. So I suppose I should let you meet with Vea now. There's an abandoned cave along the coast. It's in the swamp and smells like rot, which makes it the perfect place to hide. Vea's supposed to wait inside, but she's bored. I know she's been sneaking out. You'll find her in the cave, or just outside. Get to the swamp and find Vea. She's eager for any information about her brother, so she's really going to appreciate getting that registry. Just try not to be too charming when you meet her hero. She has enough distractions as it is. Vea would face too many temptations here in Balmora. Friends, favorite places, familiar sights and sounds. Not to mention the proximity to all things House Redron. Even the most thick-headed house guard would eventually stumble over her. Oh, don't thank me, hero. As long as you're useful and don't betray us, then we're engaged in a mutually beneficial arrangement. Cross us in any way, however, and you'll never see my blade before it plunges into your heart. Well enough. Ulran and Vea used to sneak out to watch me train. I have a way with blades that fascinated them to no end. Eventually, our fondness developed between the three of us. And to think, I never even had a nick sound growing up. It's not like personal relationships are against the rules, though I suppose they are sort of frowned upon. Anyway, my assignments always brought me back to Vardenfell, so we were able to keep in touch and visit even as they grew older. Anything's possible, but the Ulran I know holds honor above all else. I can't believe he'd do something so dishonorable that the house leaders would demand his exile. We need to find out more about what happened. Vea's young, bored, and stubborn. That makes for a volatile combination. She wants fresh air and freedom. I can't blame her for that. I can blame her for assuming I'm not aware of her little excursions. I thought I trained her better than that. Danger's a relative term, especially when you're dealing with relatives. Vea can make her own decisions. If she wants to risk getting caught by House Redren, that's on her head, especially since she knows they've been searching that area.
finest merchandise around. What is it? Sure, it's Vea. House Redoran isn't emptying its coffers so you can chase your own tails out here. You pay the War Claws well, because the War Claws are the best there is. We have the kitten scent. It's just a matter of time before my warriors catch her. Of course, Ferrara. Just make sure she doesn't get out of the swamp. I'll take my soldiers and guard the eastern paths, in case she eludes your warriors again. Ah, the Counselor's Lackey. I understand you've made significant progress in your search for Vea. As a matter of fact, so have we. This whole ordeal will be over soon, and then you can be on your way, Outlander. My mercenaries have spotted Vea skulking about the northern portion of the swamp. Between my soldiers and Fair Haraz war claws, the Counselor's daughter will soon be home safe and sound. Vea's brother. <laughs> it's a sad story. Killed one of his own soldiers to protect an Ashlander, of all things. I think they were being too lenient when they simply exiled him. But that's how they treat the privileged few. Ulran always had an unnatural attraction to the Ashlanders and their savage ways. He felt that an Ashlander life was worth more than a Redoran life. The Council didn't agree with his assessment. This will all be over as soon as Ferhara finds Vea. Khajiit mercenaries of the highest order. For members of a lesser race, Ferhara's warriors are surprisingly effective. I employ them to bolster our forces, 
between obligations to the Pact and other matters, House Redoran is spread thin of late. As you say, Ferhara's war claws take their contract as seriously as you do, however. Get in their way, and I can't guarantee your safety. Ferhara assumes the Counselor's minions will not present a problem for the war claws. Yes, Captain? The Outlanders have been warned, Ferhara. I leave everything else to your discretion. Ferhara enjoys a friendly rivalry as much as the next mercenary. But the Relef Kitten belongs to War Claws, yes? Let's not get our tails tangled over this, Dull Claw. Forbade is such a complicated concept. It assumes that the rules are applied equally to everyone, and we both know the foolishness of that assumption. The War Claws have a long-standing contract that predates any proclamations by the Counselor. Captain Breven's predecessor? Forgive, Ferhara. This one can barely remember the names of those who lack claws and fur. But yes, we worked with Ulran, though Breven appreciates our technique so much more than he ever did. Trade secrets, you understand. Ferhara can tell you the war claws do whatever it takes to accomplish the job. This assignment is perfect for us, since we specialize in missing persons. We find them, we make them disappear. Whatever the client needs. Stupid. By the three, you really shouldn't sneak up on a person like that. If you're working with those mercenaries, I assure you, you won't take me without a fight. Oh, right. Now you mentioned something about that. Look, I can't wait to hear what you learned, but the swamp is crawling with mercenaries. There's a cave to the northeast. We can talk there. Unfortunately, there's a mob of those beast people between here and the cave. I was going to try and sneak past them. But every time I get too close, I think one of them catches my scent. You're going to tackle that mob of fur and claws? I'm impressed. Meet me at the cave when you're finished. I think we have a lot to talk about. Oh, and try not to get killed. I really want to know what you came all this way to tell me. Meet me in the cave to the north when you finish with the mercenaries.
What do you think of my luxurious accommodations? It's got dirt and rock, fungus and a poultry fire, all the comforts of home. Anyway, you said you had information about my brother, Oran. What did you find out? No, that can't be right. Oran's honorable and noble. He's a model soldier. What could he have possibly done to warrant being banished? What? My brother has always been interested in the Ashlanders, even showed them a kindness the rest of the house doesn't approve of. But for him to kill someone, especially one of his own soldiers, something terrible must have happened. I know the tribe that Oran liked to help, brought them supplies and such. He'd go and visit their camp whenever our father wasn't paying attention. Will you go with me to talk to them? Wait, someone's coming. She can handle herself just fine, hero. Vea, grab your things. It's time to go. Go? Why? What's going on? The Warclaws are marching toward this cave, along with half the House Redwin soldiers and Balmora. We need to go now. Damn it. They must have followed us. I'll get my stuff. Ah. Dealing with an arrogant, impatient, overconfident young woman. Now I know how my mother must have felt. We need to move. It won't take those damn cats long to find this place, not with their sense of smell. The back tunnels. Better than heading out the front door and right into the main contingent of Redoran troops. Councillor Eris brought additional soldiers from town. He's intent on getting his daughter, and he may have the numbers to do it. One more thing. The back tunnels wind their way through territory that House Redoran recently acquired. We may run into some resistance, but it shouldn't be as bad as what's waiting outside the front of the cave. Unstable to you? 